All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a very great um, Easter break. So uh, we will get started. Let me share you guys with my screens here. All right. So yeah, I really like the picture. Oh, this is one of the um, um, someone send uh, send this miss on uh, Facebook. I really like it. The picture here says that the, the devil. Uh, with conversation with the Lord, um, Jesus. Um, so the devil says, with COVID-19, I close your churches. And then the Lord said, say, on the contrary, I just open one in everyone's house. Okay, I, that's really nice here. So yeah, I really appreciate the, uh, being able to spend time more with my family and kids. So I hope you guys are also enjoying this during this um, difficult time. Although sometimes, um, Working and learning could be challenging, but it's a very wonderful time. Okay, so um, a couple of reminders here. Um, this is the plan for this class for the um, next um, three weeks. Okay, so homework ten will be due on um, um, April twenty first, which will be the Tuesday next week. Okay, and then the eleven is due on the twenty seventh. Okay, so that's um, that is actually Monday on the finals week, okay? And then our final exam is scheduled by the university on um, April 29th, which is the Wednesday, um, starting at 7.50 um, to 9.40, okay? So um, take note here, we'll, our exam is, at, is starting um, as a different time as the class, okay? So that's 7.50, okay? So I probably can send you guys out the exam earlier, uh, say maybe four, seven, 7.30 or 7.40, okay? And then I have set this up on Moodle. So you will have to turn it in on Moodle by 10 o'clock, okay? Now, some of you guys tried this uh, last time, had uh, difficulty um, turning it in on Moodle, but most of you guys were able to do that, okay? So um, you might try it one more time next time on the final. If, if you still couldn't do it, just um, do what you did um, as exam three, okay? So um, send me your uh, work in PDF um, in, in email, okay? That will work as well. All right, and then uh, we have still have two more labs. This week we'll be doing the law of reflection and refraction, okay? So some of you guys will, put, will be doing the lab this afternoon, some of you guys will be doing it on Friday, okay? So that's what we have uh, for the next um, a couple of weeks. Um, so exam three, you guys did really well, okay? So the average of the class is about 83.5%, okay? So good job on that, um, keep it on, okay? So um, yeah, so, <clears throat> and then current, um, your current grades for most of you guys, so I was working on the grades um, on Moodle yesterday, I upload all what you have so far on the Moodle. So for most of you guys, the current grade show is, consistent with what I have, okay? Only one of you guys, I don't know what happened, um, the system didn't calculate right, but um, all of you guys either have A's or B's, okay, in the class. No one is having a great, um, current grade uh, less than B minus at this point, okay? All right, so um, the exception that the current grade is not consistent with my recording here is for Gabby, okay? So Gabby, um, you are actually on um, your Moodle, you actually, um, your grade show is a little bit higher than what I had here, okay? So it's just one letter grade, okay? It's much, not much difference, okay? But as I said, the most of the classes are, or everyone in the class is either having A's or B's, okay? So good job on that. All right. <clears throat> So yeah, so again, if you just um, could send me um, a text message in the chat, um, say good morning or hi, whatever, I can take that as attendance later, okay? So if you haven't done so. All right, so um, any, any questions you guys have on the, um, the upcoming schedules, the, the plan we have so far? Just unmute yourself and then you can ask, okay? So we only have two more homeworks um, towards the end of the semester, okay? So then the final exam will be uh, based on the two assignments, okay? So it should be very similar um, problems um, in the two assignments, okay? So that's what we'll be having. 
All right, so let's get started on the lecture here. So we will be still looking at um, chapter 16 here. Okay, so we kind of um, jump back um, towards the earlier chapters here. Okay, so after we talk about chapter 17 and 16, then we'll um, go back to the later chapters of the textbook. Okay, so briefly, last time we talked about the waves. Okay, so in physics, wave is defined as um, a disturbance um, that propagates from the origin, okay, outward. So there are several different kinds of wave, uh, mechanical wave, less gravitational wave, less e electromagnetic wave, okay, so um, several different types. Uh, for mechanical waves, like the one you see, like the water wave, the wave in the stream, or the sound waves, okay, so these are mechanical waves. The propagation of these waves require media, okay, so like for water wave, water is the media. For the uh, wave on the stream, stream is the media. For sound wave, air is the media, okay. Other waves, other type, kinds of waves like EMM waves and gravitational waves, they don't necessarily need um, required um, any media, okay, they, they can propagate in vacuum. All right, so to describe wave, um, several quantities here, um, you need to pay attention to the period. Um, so it's the time it takes from, um, for the wave to repeat itself, okay? And then wavelength is um, the, the distance it takes for wave to repeat itself, okay? So lambda is the wavelength, uh, period is, uh, is used, uh, represented by cap, uh, capital T. And then the frequency, it's basically one over the period, okay, it's F. All right, <clears throat> um, for mechanical waves, which is the focus of this chapter, um, so there are two kinds of mechanical waves, transverse waves and longitudinal waves, okay? So for transverse waves, it uh, propagates in one direction, but the media actually moves up and down perpendicular to the direction of propagation, okay? So uh, wave goes in this direction, the media vibrate in this direction, okay? For longitudinal waves, if the wave goes in one direction, then the media um, vibrate in that same direction, back and forth, back and forth, okay? But the wave goes in the forward direction. All right, <clears throat> now the interaction of waves we call uh, superposition or interference. Okay, so it's basically the algebraic sum of the two uh, waves. Okay, so if you, you, can, you can actually have a mathematical expression for each of wave. Okay, so say y1 for wave one, y2 for wave two, then the um, interaction of the two waves at particular location, then you just do y1 plus y2, okay? If you have two identical waves meet at the same uh, location, then they actually add up, okay? So if you have opposite waves, um, saying like one is having a uh, different phase than the other one, okay? So if one has um, peak at the moment, but the other one has the minimum, then the two will uh, actually cancel out, okay? So that's um, destructive um, con interference, okay? If the two add up, we call it construct interference, okay? Um, also, wave could be propagated in two dimensional, okay, so for like for water waves, okay. So then the, um, if you have two waves propagated in two dimensional at locations they meet, they will have interactions, okay, or interference. They could have also like having construct interference um, at, at given condition, under given condition, and then destruct interference under the other conditions, okay. All right, <clears throat> so, if we have two waves coming out of two sources, okay? So if the two sources are synchronized, that means um, they peak at the same time, they minimize, they have minimum at the same time, and then they zero at the same time, okay? So if that's the case, then depending on the locations the two waves meet, okay? You could have constructing interference at that particular con um, location or, or destruct interference or anything in between, okay? So the conditions for construct interference if the two waves coming out of two identical or in-phase sources, that means um, they are synchronized, okay? They peak at the same time, they have minimum at the same time, okay? We call them to be in-phase sources, okay? So if two waves are coming out from two in-phase sources, then um, according to the different paths in, in their paths, so 
if the difference in passes is, is integer multiples of a wavelength, then you will have um, construct interference at that location, okay? If you have the difference in the passes are uh, half multiples of the wavelengths, then you have destructive interference, okay? So that means at this location, when the two waves meet, one wave will have maximum, the other one will have minimum, then they will cancel out, okay? That's um, destructive interference. Now, on the other hand, if you have two waves coming out of an, um, from two opposite phases, phase sources, so that means uh, starting from the source, if at certain um, given moment, it gives out um, minimum, then the other one will have maximum, okay? So if that's the case, then um, if the past differences at a particular location is uh, multiples of um, wavelengths, then you have actually destruct interference, okay? On the other hand, if you have difference in, in passes to be uh, halves of, half multiples of the uh, wavelengths, then you have um, constructive uh, interference, okay? So pay um, special attention to if the two sources are in phase or in opposite phases, okay? All right. Now mathematically, we can look at the, um, the expressions. So a wave can be a function of location, function of x, and then uh, function of time t, okay? So if you say y1 is a, the magnitude times sine of kx minus omega t, so this is typical uh, uh, expression for, for wave, okay? So k is the wave number, which is two pi over lambda. Omega is equal to two pi over t. Okay, the uh, period T. All right, and then if you have second wave, which is a little bit in uh, difference in phase, so that means um, it's shifted by a little bit, okay? So as the figure shows here. So the two add up, you can see the mathematical expression over here. We have went through this in class last time. So I'm gonna to just show you the result, okay? So the result will be having a, a new amplitude times a new sine function. Okay, so depending on the difference in the phase, okay, so how much they are shift, shifted, okay? So if the difference is, there's no difference, if that has zero, then they are in phase, okay? So you'll see the uh, construct interference. If that has equal to 180, then you have destruct interference, okay? The two will cancel out in that case. All right, and then um, last time we also talked about standing waves. Okay, so if you have two, a stream that has been fixed at the both ends, okay, then you can actually um, give, like you can plug the stream, then you will vibrate, okay? So it will have different, several different possibilities here, okay? So the two ends are fixed, so that means the two ends are, will have zero uh, vibration, or it doesn't move, okay, they are fixed. And then the, the rest of the string could be moving back and forth, okay? So you could have a configuration like this, okay? In the middle, the vibration is maximum, or you could have a um, configuration like this, okay? Or I think in the, yeah, the figure shows here, okay? Or the second, so the first configuration here is called the first harmonic, okay? So which gives you the, lowest frequency you could have on of the wave on the string, okay? And then the second configuration here in B, you could have the two ends being fixed, but at the middle point, that could be also uh, having minimum in vibration. And then you have, so whenever you have minimum in vibration, it call, it's called uh, notes, okay? Otherwise, if you have maximum in vibration, it's called anti-notes, okay? So you could have three notes here, you have, could have two anti-notes here. So this is the second possibility you could have, okay? This is called second harmonica. So this, uh, when you have such a wave confined in this stream, then the frequency is the, um, the second um, lowest frequency, so called second harmonica. And then going up, etc. cetera, it's called third harmonica, fifth harmonica, etc. or fourth harmonica, etc. okay? So basically you will have different numbers of nodes and anti-nodes. You always has more, one more nodes than anti-nodes because the two ends are fixed, they are the nodes, okay? So fundamental frequency then will be equal to V divided by two L, okay? Fundamental wavelength is two times L, okay? And then these are the equations for higher harmonics, okay? Um, higher wavelengths and then higher uh, frequencies, okay? 
All right, and then we did this lab um, last, um, the week before the break, okay? So where um, actually in the lab, you will see this equation V equals to square root of F divided by mu. So F is the tension in the string. If you have more tension in the string, you will have more velocity. Mu is the mass density per length, okay? So if you have more dense um, mu, then you'll have um, less velocity, okay? so. That's why you could have different frequencies uh, if you have different uh, mass attached at the end of the pulley, okay? All right, on the other scenario, if you have just one end of the string being fixed and the other end being um, open, then you could have different possibilities for the wavelengths you could have, okay? So in this the figure shows here. So the fixed end, you will have node. The open end, you will have anti-nodes. And then in between, you could have other um, different numbers of nodes and anti-nodes, okay, as shown here. So the first uh, possibility here is called, again, the fundamental, um, or the set first harmonic, and the wavelengths, and then the, the frequencies are listed in the equations here, okay? Now you can always refer to this figure for the um, frequencies and wavelengths. All right, so today we'll be talking about another kind of standing wave. Um, so this is the standing waves um, in the um, columns of air, okay? So if you have several different bottles, you can fill them with different heights of water, okay? Or different height of whatever liquids, and then you can blow air on the top, okay? So um, if you are um, lucky you get, uh, or you can try this multiple times, you, at a certain point you are going to be able to get here some tunes produced by the air column confined in the, in the bottle there, okay? So you can see if the air column has different lenses, you will hear different frequencies or different pitches, okay? So um, this is called sending wave being confined in the air column, okay? Many musical instruments use um, air columns, okay, so like flutes or uh, other kinds of um, devices like this, or like drums, okay. All right. So now for air column, if you have one end open and one end closed, okay, so then this is, so for the um, closed end, so the air inside will vibrate, okay. So for the close end, you always get um, nodes there. And then on the open end, you always get um, anti-nodes there, okay? So you could, again, you could have different uh, frequencies of waves uh, confined in the air column. You could have this one. We called it first harmonic, and you could have this guy, you could have this guy, okay, A, B, C, and then higher harmonics, okay? So in this case, um, this is similar to a stream having one end fixed, the other end being um, free to move, okay? So this is um, similar to this guy here. So then um, the equations are the same, okay? In this case, compared to a string uh, being one, being fixed at one end and then the other end being uh, free to move, okay? Um, on the other hand, uh, if you have a column that is having both and open, then in this case, you will have anti-nodes, okay, on both ends then you could have um, nodes in the middle of here, or you could have other configuration like this. So for the open ends, you always get anti-nodes, okay? Now you could have different number of nodes and anti-nodes in between. Now in this case, okay, although it's different, um, the configuration is different from the two ends both being fixed stream, but it's actually uh, pretty much the same scenario here, okay? If you look at the first figure here, over here, you can see this is like, um, so for one wave, okay, this is like half of wavelength, okay, for the whole length here. So it goes from a maximum to another ma a minimum, to a minimum here, okay. So in that sense, this is pretty much the same if you write in equation, it's the same equations you have for the two ends fixed stream, okay. So then that's the same thing, all right. So the equations are the same, but uh, you get anti nodes on, on the free open ends, okay. Now, um, another thing I didn't have uh, it on the PowerPoint is the, on the scenario if you have both ends of the column, air column being fixed, okay? Then you will get nodes at both ends, okay? But the equations will be the same as this guy, okay? So if you have a tube that is open at both ends or with both ends closed, then the equations are the same, okay? All right. <clears throat> 
So let's take a look on the first example of the day here. So this one says, if you have organ pipe open at both ends, has a harmonic with a frequency of 440 hertz. The next higher harmonic in the pipe has a frequency of 495 hertz. Find the frequency of the fundamental and then the length of the pipe. Use speed of sound as 400, 340 meters per second. Okay, so if you have air columns, so then the wave is sound wave because that's what you hear. Okay, you can hear the wave, uh, the sound from produced by the um, the air column. It's so it's a wave, uh, sound wave. So then, um, pretty much you'll be using the speed of sound. Okay, in that scenario. So let's take a look on this one here together. Okay. All right, because you have the organ pipe two ends being um, both end being closed open, so this is the you can use the formula in the previous slides. Okay, so then the let's see. Okay, let's uh, flip one slice back. Okay, so for the frequency f sub m, so f means frequency, m means the order of harmonic. This is could be uh, any order of harmonic. Let's call it just m. Okay, it could be one, could be two, could be three. Okay, etc. So this is equal to m times the fundamental, fundamental being n f sub one, okay? So let's go back. So this is the main equation we'll be using, okay? And then for the uh, fundamental frequency, it should be equal to the velocity um, divided by all the speed of the sound divided by twice of the, the column, length of the column, okay? So it says, um, has a harmonic, a certain harmonic, it doesn't specify which order is this, so we can just call it M, okay? So then that means M times F1 is equal to 440 hertz, okay? Now the next higher harmonic, then we should have M plus one as the next higher harmonic, okay? So also multiply by the fundamental frequency, that gives you the frequency for the, the next higher harmonic. Okay, that is equal to 495 hertz. Okay, so these are the two equations we can write from the, um, the information given. Okay, so N's harmonic have that and then M plus one harmonic has that. Okay, so you have two equations, you have two unknowns. One unknown being M, the other unknown being F1. Okay, so we can solve for the two. All right, so here, what you can do is because you have two equations, now on the second equation, you can rewrite. So on the second equation, you can rewrite it as M times F1 plus F1, right? Equals to 495, right? If you distribute F1 into the parentheses, that's what you get, okay? So N F1 plus F1, right? Now, from the first equation, you see M times F1 is 440. So then you can replace N F1 with 440. So then 440 plus F1 equals to 495, all right? So you can solve for your F1 first. That should be 495 minus 440. So that gives you 55 hertz, okay? So your fi fundamental frequency then is 55 hertz, okay? So that's um, part A, what part A is asking, so for 55, all right? Now, once we have that, um, we can plug it in there, so then we can um, solve for the, the L, the length of the air column, because the speed of sound is known as 340, okay? So then you can set it up 55 equals to 340 divided by twice of L, okay? So um, you can um, move, you can multiply both sides by 2L, okay? So 2L on this side, 2L on that side. All right, so it's 2L, 2L times 55 is 110L equals two, all right? So 340, so then your L is equal to 340 divided by 110, okay? So that will give you um, 
3.09 meters. Okay, so that's the length of your um, pipe. Okay. Any questions you guys might have, you can unmute yourself, okay, and then speak up. Or you can send me a text in the chat, okay? So, although sometimes I might miss that, but um, you can do that too, okay? I, I will um, check frequently. All right. So, if you have no questions, we'll move on here, okay? So, we have talked about the, um, if the, um, the two waves, Okay, when they meet, if they have um, different phases, okay, then you will have different interference, okay? Now, if two, if two waves, if they don't have the same frequencies, okay, they will also, also interference, interfere each other, okay? So, if the interference of two phases um, is due to their um, difference in frequencies, we call it as beats, okay? So this happens when the two um, waves are very close in frequencies, okay? So say one probably like 110, the other one could be 112, okay? So mathematically, you can also prove, okay? So this is what you have. If you have different frequencies, that means periods are different, okay? So you have different periods or different frequencies here. You can write it in mathematically. So then, um, now, assuming they are having the same amplitude, but just having difference in frequencies, okay? So then you can um, add the two waves up, okay? You will have a resultant of different waves, okay? So as this guy here, okay? So then your um, new amplitude will be this term here, which is given by a cosine function due to the differences in frequencies, okay? Now, in this case, you can see I actually um, use cosine instead here of a sine function. So, so I'm just doing this in purpose so you guys know that for a wave, it could be a sine function, it also could be a cosine function, okay? So you can also write in cosine function. All right, so then what you hear is, um, this is resultant, it's in the um, purple here, but you can see the amplitude changes, okay? So you'll hear probably hear different um, um, change in the volumes, okay, uh, periodically, okay? So that's due to the frequency's difference, okay? So we call it beat frequency, okay? So then um, beat frequency is just the difference of the two frequencies of the two waves, okay? And then you take absolute values because you don't know which one is having higher frequency, which one is having lower frequency, okay? So you can just take the absolute values, okay, to get the positive um, value in the beat frequency, okay? All right, so then with beat frequency, um, we will look at a um, second example here for today. So this one says if you have two streams that are fixed at each end, they're identical um, except that one is a little bit longer than the other, okay? So two um, have identical, probably like they've been made of identical uh, materials, have um, the same linear mass density, okay? And then the same, say, the, the thickness, okay? So it says waves on these two streams propagate with a speed of 34.2 meters per second. Okay, and then the fundamental frequency of the shorter one is 212 hertz. So what would be the beat frequency produced by the two stream, okay? If they are both vibrating at the fundamental frequency. And then second question is, does the beat frequency in part, part A increase or decrease if the longer string is increased in length? And then C is giving a specific number for the increase in length and then ask you to um, calculate that, that again, okay? So again, um, we will take a look at this one together here, okay? So um, for a reminder of the semester, I think um, we are running tight in time. So probably I will just go through the solutions to each examples in, in class myself, okay? So I'm, I'm, 
will not be able to give you guys extra time to do this. But you guys can um, watch the um, lecture video again later. Okay, you can, after class, you can try to work on this um, by yourself and then you can probably see the uh, replay of this again, okay, some, at some time later. But let's see here, okay. So, um, two streams, okay, so both and fixed. So you can sketch the problem, like one stream here, and then the scan stream is a little bit longer, okay. All right, so the difference is um, just about half centimeter longer, okay, 0 0.560 centimeter longer on this part. Okay, now they are fixed at both ends and then they are vibrating at their fundamental frequencies. So that means you are looking for F1. Okay, you are looking at F1. Um, so let me just um, use F as the fundamental frequency and then one refers to the stream one and then I'll be doing F2 that refer also refer to the fundamental frequency but for stream stream two, okay? So I'm not going to use F1 for fundamental frequency. I will just add, use F as fundamental frequency and then one denotes first stream and then F2 denotes the fundamental frequency for the second stream, okay? All right, it tells us the fundamental frequency for the first one is 212, okay? But fundamental frequency is equal to the speed of the wave divided by twice of the length, okay? So twice of L1 that's equal to 212 hertz, okay? Now speed we know is 34.2 meters per second given, okay? So um, the first one, question A is asking what's the beat frequency, so F beat, okay? Should be equal to F1 minus F2, absolute value of F1 minus F2, okay? So we need F1, it's given, we need also F2, all right? Now F2, um, it's the fundamental frequency for the second stream, so it should be equal to the speed of the wave in the stream divided by twice of the length of the second one, okay? Again, we know V, then we need to know L2, okay? L2, from the information given, L2 is a little bit longer than L1, right? L2 is longer by 0 0.560 in centimeter of L1. So if you can figure out L1, then you can figure out your F, your L2, then you have your F2, okay? Um, but how do we figure out L1 here? I think we can figure it out from over here, right? From this equation over here. Because we are given V, we are given this uh, F1, 212. So then L1 can be solved, okay? So we'll start from there. So according to F1 equals to V divided by 2L1, so then L1 is equal to V divided by 2F1, okay? So you can um, check the algebra here. You kind of multiply both sides by L1 and then divide both sides by F1. Or you can move L1 to the other side, okay? Then denominator become numerator. You can move this guy to the other side. Numerator become denominator either way. You'll arrive at this expression, okay? So then this is 34.2 divided by two times 212 hertz, okay? So it gives you L1 equals to 0 0.08066, all right? So my V is in SI unit, my F is in SI unit. So this should be also in FI, SI unit of meters for the length, okay? So then I have L1, so my L2 can be Calculate should be equal to L1 plus 0 0.560 centimeter, okay? So this is 0 0.08066. This is in meters. The second one is in centimeters. So you want to convert the second one into meters as well, okay? So then it's 0 0.00560 in meters, all right? So I think that's a um, very easy mistake to make, okay, because they are having different units here. Okay, so then, um, this will give you 
zero point zero eight six okay two six meters. All right. So now you have L2, you can solve for, you can calculate for your F2. So F2 then is equal to V divided by 2 L2, okay? So 34.2 meters per second divided by 0 0.08626 meters, okay? That gives you F2 in, uh, as 198.2 hertz, okay? Now you have F2, you can calculate your beat frequency, okay? So let me pull this camera a little bit forward here. So the F beat should be equal to absolute value of F1 minus F2, which is 212 minus 198.2 hertz, okay? So then you'll have 13.8 hertz as your final answer, okay? So the beat frequency by this two stream is that much. All right, any questions you guys have on part A here before we move on to part B? Now part B says, um, if you have your length of L2, if it's longer, as if it's increased, So it's not asking if um, it increase or decrease what happens, okay, uh, for the beat frequency. So we can an analyze this scenario over here. So the beat frequency is equal to, so F beat is equal to absolute value of F1 minus F2, okay? So we know F1 is shorter, or uh, actually L1 is shorter, shorter string will produce a higher frequency. 212, okay, longer string will produce a lower fundamental frequency, okay? So then F1 is going to be greater than F, F2, okay? So F1 is greater than F2, so then absolute value should be just F1 minus F2 would be positive. All right, now F2 is equal to V divided by two L2, okay? So it says if L2, so if L2 is increased, the velocity speed doesn't increase, so then F2 decrease, if that's the scenario, okay? So if L2 increase, F2 should decrease, then this guy, the total F beat should be increased because the smaller number becomes smaller again, then the difference should be greater, okay? So if L2 increase, Sorry, it's not in the camera region, okay. So if L2 increase, then F beat will increase, okay. And then if L2 decreases, then F beat will decreases too, okay. So, Let's take a look here with an example, okay? So it's pretty much the repetition of the part A, but you are just even different, um, at the different data L, okay? So um, see here, so if we are looking for F2 prime, the new uh, fundamental frequency on the second stream, then we are will be using the same V divided by two L2 prime, okay? So in this time, is the, oh, the 34.2 meters per second divided by twice of L2 will be again L1 plus, L1 is 0 0.0806, okay, plus the same. Now the difference in the two string is a different number of 0 0.00761 in meters, okay, you convert the 0 0.761 centimeter in meter, then you move it to uh, the decimals, um, two digits to the left, okay? So that's what you have here. So then this will give you a new frequency for the second one to be 193.8 Hertz, okay? So then the new beat frequency will be equal to F1 minus F2 prime, okay? 212 Hertz minus 193.8 Hertz, which it's going to be 18.2 Hertz, okay? So you can see, greater than 13.8 Hertz, okay? 
So if you have a longer stream, now the frequency is um, of F2 is lower, then the beat frequency will, will be higher, okay? All right. Questions you guys might have? Okay, if you don't have questions, then um, we'll move on here. Okay, so the next section in this chapter um, talks about the energy, okay, in waves, which we kind of talk about this um, when we are um, in, in electromagnetic wave, okay? So the intensity, the first, um, turn to look at here is the intensity, okay? So intensity is the um, energy the wave ca carries divided by the area it passes through in a given time t, okay? So intensity I is equal to the energy divided by A divided by T, okay, or A times T, all right? Now recall that um, when we talk about power, that's defined as energy divided by T, so power equals to um, E divided by T, then the intensity is equal to power divided by area, okay? So in this expression here, the intensity of a wave then doesn't have the time in the expression, it's just power divided by A, but keep in mind, because power is already, is defined as energy divided by T, okay? So that term has actually, um, has time embedded, okay, in th its definition. If, um, the SI unit for intensity then will be watts divided by area or meter square. Okay, so um, watts is the SI unit for power, meter square is the SI unit for area. Okay, and now for a point source, if you have a, a wave coming from a point source, say pretty much like a speaker, uh, it's a point source. Okay, you can hear the sound in all directions. Then. Um, depending on the distance you are away from the, pop, the source, okay, so you can see the area, so if you are distance R away from the source, then the area at the distance R should be a spherical area over there, okay, so you can see because the um, wave propagates in all directions, then you should take the spherical uh, sphere as the area. So then intensity equals to P divided by 4 pi R squared. Okay, if you are R distance away, so you can see the intensity decreases um, as distance increases. Okay, so it's, in, it's proportional, inverse proportional to the distance squared. So many um, biological bodies use this um, intensity here. So for the bats, they give out the sound waves and then they can um, hear back layer um, waves uh, called echoes uh, by say a moss, okay? So depending on the intensity um, that is coming back, they will be able to, to determine how far the, the moss is, okay? So that's one of the um, example. Also dolphin use the um, intensity of the wave they gave out as well, okay? So that's pretty much what we um, need to cover in um, the reminder of chapter 16 from last semester, okay? So now we will turn to um, chapter 17 here to get started um, on this chapter, okay? And then we can, hopefully, we can finish chapter 17 on Friday, all right? So chapter 17 um, pretty much focus on sound waves, all right? So um, we know that sound wave, sound is a wave, okay? So it propagates in air, air is the media for the sound, okay? And then the hearing is the perception of the sound. So we can hear it um, because the, the wave comes in into our ear, okay? All right, so for sound wave, okay, if you look at, if you were able to um, map out the movements of the air molecules here, so in the top figure on the left, on the right here shows the 
um, air molecules as black dots, okay? So if you were able to capture that, then you'll see that as sun will propagate through air, you'll see the air molecules um, segregate as one point and then um, it's more um, loose at another location, okay? So that's because the movement of air molecules is going back and forth, back and forth, okay? So, um, so the vibration of air molecular, you can pick a particular air molecular, you can look at the, um, the density vibration, okay, variation. You see it's either sine function or cosine function, all right? So then if you look at the pressure of the airs, uh, when the sound wave comes, um, propagates through it, you'll see that the pressure is also a sine function or a cosine function, okay? And then um, when the wave reaches our ear drum, um, it receives the waves um, there. Okay, then um, our nerve will be able to detect the, the pressures exert on the ear, eardrum and then we hear the sound, okay. So similarly, um, for sound wave, uh, we should be able to, um, we, um, or we should know the sound of the quantities that used to describe um, the sound wave, okay. So again, um, wavelengths, which is um, the distance from a peak to a second peak, okay, and then period is the time um, takes for the wave to pass um, for a distance of uh, one wavelength, okay? Frequency is again one over uh, period. Speed of wave then will be the uh, from distance divided by time, the definition, if you take one period, then the distance travel will be one wavelength, time it takes to be one period t, okay? Or it could be expressed in terms of lambda times frequency. Okay, so either lambda divided by um, period or lambda times frequency. Speed of sound varies in different media. Okay, speed of the sound can propagate in air, it can also propagate in other materials like say um, solid or uh, liquid. Okay, so in solid actually the sound wave um, um, comes earlier. Okay, so you guys probably um, say watch some movies. Um, so people, for example, when the war time, people will be like put the ears on the, on the floor and then to try to hear like the, the marching of the, the other army and then they will be able to hear that um, because the sound wave uh, propagates um, in, the, in, the, in the ground faster than in, in the air, okay? If they couldn't see, they might be able to hear it, okay? So um, in aluminum, it uh, propagates in a very large speed, okay, 6,420, 6, okay. In air, it's about 340. It also depends on temperature, okay. The higher the temperature, the um, faster the wave can propagate, okay, a little bit. Speed of sound at room temperature is pretty much about 340, okay, or 343, um, or 707 miles per hour, okay. So in equation, um, this is um, the ten temperature dependence of the speed of the sound, okay? So speed of the sound um, at sea level in air is given by the, um, the first equation on the top here, okay? And then in general for speed of sound, of if you have different um, gases, different types of gases, okay? So if you have different types of gases, then the speed of the sound is also different, okay? So depending on what types of gases you have, all right? So then it's um, 3 kT over M, okay? Where K, um, K is the Boltzmann constant of 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per carbon. Mass is the mass of each particle in the, in the gas, okay? So you probably get the uh, molecular mass from periodical table, then you will have to divide it by um, Avogadro numbers to get the mass of each particle, okay? So for example, for oxygen, it's about 32 grams per mole. So you don't use 32 grams here, you use 32 divide by the Avogadro number 6.02 times 10 to the 23, okay? So just keep that in mind. This is the mass per each particle. Okay, on the bottom equation here. All right. So, I think we are going to stop here for today. All right. So then, um, 
for some of you guys, I will see you guys um, in the afternoon for the live section, okay? And then um, for the rest of the class, I will see you guys um, um, Friday, okay? So um, any questions you guys have for me? I kind of rushed through today's lecture um, because I'm having full screen mode here. I didn't know what time is it. It looks like we are ahead of time, but that's fine, okay? Uh, we can stop here for today. Uh, we'll come back on um, Friday for the lecture, okay? So if you have no questions, then um, I'll see some of you guys in the afternoon and then uh, rest of you guys on Friday. Okay, have a good day, guys. <laughs>